Last we left off, you had arrived at the Queen's Gambit and were met by Isaac Everhart, Ward of the Immortal Man, your hopeful patron to be. He ushered you within the richly adorned interior of the Gentleman's Club and then up to the third floor conservatory, where, after a short wait and some arcane warding, the Immortal Man himself was introduced. As a show of good faith and trust, he gave you his name, Ludomir Nostov, then asked for you to tell him everything you'd seen and done since your adventure began. Your rapid fire tore through your last month's encounters with Ursa and Cal, sharing the power you saw within her, the dark oozing form that came along with her emerald guardian, the moths and the strangeness you experienced with them, your travel and arrival in Darkvale, and the oddities that occurred in the short time you were in the icy port before your trek back to Carton. He sat and made notes alongside a few probing questions before finally, when the tale was told, he gave his final judgment. With an acknowledgement of Isaac's good choices, he deemed you all honest and emboldened by a desire to do what was right in the face of great consequences, and thus extended an offer of patronage and acceptance into a larger group. To accept lead to coin and to shoulder a great responsibility, but also many opportunities. In time, you each came to agree, sign, and were welcomed into the Infinite Alliance. With that, Ludomir departed, uh, and you were instructed to meet at the Hall of Antiquity the following morning to begin your next adventure. A night's rest and a few minor purchases made, morning came, and you entered the Lake Ward. Here you found the Hall, a museum of the world of Vigil, and it was open to the public all weekend. With no sign of Isaac or Ludomir, you consulted an item you'd been given to prepare for the day. On a large key ring sat an ancient brass key and an additional five smaller empty key rings. Andy's intelligence and study of geography proved most useful to piece together that the key and its five rings were symbolic of the Sindarian capital of Helios and the five ring sister cities that make up the empire's ruling class. Pairing that to the permanent exhibit here, and you'd found your heading. Inside this exhibit, you walked through the history of the oldest empire in Vigil, before coming at, to the end at a metallic bust of an ancient brass dragon. Here you discovered the rings were minorly enchanted, and under the touch of flame would each spring open to reveal a passcode, and once read aloud, a keyhole. With the key in hand, a hidden latch in the dragon's mouth was revealed, and stairs within lead into darkness below, as we begin tonight. So, what are you doing? Can I have... I'll take out... Uh, I'll have a little fire, and I'll have Ray going beside me. I'll use that... Um... Not burning hands, produce, produce flame, not produce, sure. Pr produce, <laughs> Jesus, great start. I'm gonna have a little flame. fireball in my hand for some light. <laughs> I should also have pretty good night vision, I think. Um, it is, um, in fact, like pitch black. There is no source of light within as you kind of all poke your heads through and look down into this kind of um, descent. Um, but with produce flame and with a race kind of natural, a little bit of light, um, Basically, it becomes two sources of torch light. Um, you do see a, a carved set of stone steps that seem to descend um, well away into darkness, uh, but you do see a curve, so it does kind of go out of sight before you can see any anything beyond. I think we still have Pass It Out of Trace on, too. Uh, yeah, like just you would have a it. Pass Out of Trace, and Andy should still have Comprehend Languages in the last probably five, six minutes of Detect Magic up. How long does Comprehend Languages last? Is that an hour? It's, it's an hour, but let me check. Not hugely going to matter, but it might. You never know. And then I'm passes. Sure. Oh, passes one hour, too. I thought it was 10. That's great. One hour. Sweet. No. It's yeah. an hour. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the, both of those are basically at the full at, time. As we're going down, are, is there any more like um, hieroglyphics or any like signage like on the walls as we go down? Um, you're gonna as you begin to descend on the on like the carves of the of the revealed staircase. Yeah, and like down on the on the sides of the wall, like as we go down. Um, as you as you begin to descend and looking for the sign, nothing but uh, but stone, um, you know, bricks and and um, it's it's relatively um, relatively like clean. Um, no signs of, of writing, nothing magically kind of revealed beneath detect magic, no extra uh, wording or language is revealed. Um, but as you do begin to descend with your light, just kind of aiding, you descend about 30 or 40 feet down uh, roughly into darkness before the stairs fully curl all the way back, pretty much the way you came in, the, in that direction. Um, where you see light illuminate an arched doorway that you see stand open to a sunken sitting area 
her story that leads into this area of marble tile and stairs that lead into a kind of a sitting area. You can see some chairs and, and sofas and tables are set uh, as you make your way a little further down. As you enter into this room proper, um, through these uh, open doors, you see a series of wingback chairs beside small coffee tables and bookshelves, two large double doors on the left and right side of this room, um, and another two paths that would lead uh, up a set of stairs forward in the same direction you're headed on the other side of this room, around what is a central curved dome of metal that sits as the backdrop to this entry room. And it's uh, the dome itself reaches its apex at the ceiling, about 20 feet above you. Uh, it's about 30 feet across, nearly as wide as this room, this entry room is, um, only leaving about 10 feet on either side for hallways to pass. Uh, and as you all begin to uh, filter down in here, immediately striding towards you, you recognize Isaac. Uh, and from the pair of chairs he just left, you see Ludmir still sitting with a slight smirk, legs crossed, uh, waiting back as uh, Isaac kind of comes to stand beside the door to gesture for you all to enter. He says, another five minutes, I would have won 10 gold, but uh, come on in. I'll blow out my little hand. Uh, indeed, the interior here is well lit. Um, there are like kind of chandeliers and candelabra kind of all around the space to give very moody kind of lighting, but it, it is relatively bright, um, especially with the reflective nature of a lot of these kind of uh, posh uh, surfaces. Um, uh, as uh, Isaac closes the doors behind you with a soft thum, um, Ludimir stands from his chair and crosses the room to kind of meet you halfway. Um, however, as he begins to cross and you guys kind of begin to meet in the middle of this room um, where you walk forward and where he approaches, you see a shield crest in the marble tile of the floor. A black shield trimmed in gold and in the dark heart sits a vertical Ouroboros, an infinity loop of gold atop cross swords. As you move across the room, the symbol seems to be like refracted uh, beneath itself um, like uh, two mirrors facing one another, it seemed to reflecting down into eternity beneath it. Isaac closes the doors behind, and Ludimir, with arms wide, says, Pardon, my friends. I do apologize for another trial of my dramatic flair. Riddles and puzzles have long been a passion of mine, and in truth, this will not be the last test I leave for you to solve. For now, the tests are done, and I humbly welcome you to the Nexus. Oh. A bit of a recent passion project. Thank God Andy was there for that test, or I, I don't think I would have made it down. Uh, to be fair, it was, it was a group effort. Um, also, we got very stuck. We're here now. Um, how recent? You said it's recent. This place looks ancient. Recent in... Um... In my terms, uh, it is um, um, I suppose it is in the 100, 200 year olds, but perspective. That's what you call recent? Good gracious. <laughs> he just kind of like silently just kind of doffs his head. Um, uh, as he uh, kind of gestures and says, uh, feel free to make yourselves comfortable. Uh, we have some um, some refreshments. Uh, in fact, actually, perhaps um, it makes better sense to have um, Isaac provide you a tour of, uh, of the Nexus while I prepare uh, in the vault. Uh, sure. Yeah, sure. Isaac, if you would. Just kind of nods his head and says, all right, follow me. Uh, and he begins to lead his way off to the left double doors off of this foyer. Um, and you see Ludimir kind of make his way up uh, towards that kind of dome in the middle of the room. Uh, Isaac pushes through the foyer uh, doors to the left, uh, and he begins to kind of lead you and, and walk you through a long curved hallway uh, that wraps around um, and before coming back to like the other side of the dome. But on the way around, um, immediately through these doors, there's kind of a dining area uh, and a well-stocked pantry and kitchen. 
and he just kind of is quickly going through like they try and keep things that are non-perishable here just never know who's going to be here when or how long it is until we have several people here um there are casks of ale and mead and wine that don't go bad no dedicated chef but what what food is here you're free to eat at your leisure um though um if it becomes empty perhaps wise to uh, replenish uh, from the kitchen and dining area, um, there are sleeping quarters. Uh, there are four pretty much identical rooms that he kind of quickly goes through. Um, they're well adorned, uh, well furnished, not, not massive, but um, certainly on the nicer end of any kind of tavern or in rooms you've ever stayed in, and each with a private lavatory facility um, and pretty cushy furnishings um, for a underground bunker. Um, there are four on the kind of curve at the end of this hall um, for leading to a w longer and wider room with uh, and not even closed doors, but an open arch um, where there is a medical bay. Uh, and he quickly just kind of goes through like you can see there's like um, t like operating tables and there are um, some kind of like there's plenty of like tools and surgical tools. Um, there is a what looks like uh, like a big chest, like um, like a stone chest that stands maybe about six feet long um, and about five to six. No, not five to six three to four feet tall um, and as as wide um, off to the side. And you can see it just kind of gives off this like faint, cool mist. Um, there are fresh linens and water basins and um, all kinds of vials on shelves. Question about the freshness of stuff. As we're touring through, like if Augustus ran his hand along a shelf, like they're dust. Has this been used in a while? Or do they in the medical bag? Uh, just actually throughout like yeah, I yeah. think he's wondering that guy said it's like 200 years old, but they are pretty like diligent. Just have people been down here? What's that vibe? Just make a perception check. Okay. Normal dice. I'll use my sisters. Not that great. Allie, I blame you. That is 12. <laughs> That's actually great for, for this check. It's not particularly uh, challenging. You're not trying to gauge when was the last time someone was here. You know, that specific. You're just like, it has, is there dust accumulated, which would lead you to believe that not very often. Some surfaces, yeah, um, it's a pretty big area. It's a pretty big yeah. space by the time he leads you all the way through. The medical bay doesn't look like it's seen a lot of action, though you do see signs of like some some not fully cleaned, like very, very sunken, dried like blood or some other uh, mm. liquids. Um, but uh, the medical bay looks probably the dustiest, but the kitchen is is well traveled, and there's like there are some some odd dishes and things like it's clearly been used, um, and and elements have been cleaned. The tables are well wiped and, and maintained, um, but uh, the sleeping quarters don't look like um, three of the four have been used in quite some time. One looks like relatively recently used. It's it's not dusty. I wonder if Isaac sleeps here. Say as he's giving us a tour. Just nudge me the entire back. <clears throat> uh, as he kind of continues on from the medical bay, there's a bit of a gap uh, where there's kind of a sitting area and a couple of bookshelves um, before leading to a kind of a, a, a rotund style room with columns and alcoves. Next to the medical bay is this kind of um, empty space and open area of kind of sitting areas, uh, sofas and uh, the coffee tables with some bookshelves with some uh, several books and kind of odd knickknacks and things um, before coming to a, a rotund style room with columns and alcoves. Um, again, no closed door uh, and Isaac kind of quickly uh, gestures to it as the temple of reverence. Um, and as you kind of poke your head in, you can see multiple different um, religious symbols and, and uh, iconic uh, elements in there that you could um, make a religion check if you wish to try and identify any. Also, has anything popped to detect magic so far? Uh, good good the, cue. The box? The, the box in the um, medical bay definitely would ring with a kind of uh, a pres uh, preservation uh, style magic. Where on earth? There it is. 
It's only a 13. Okay. Um, there are, I mean, there are half a dozen that you vaguely recognize, um, but there's a couple other here that you really don't. The obvious ones you recognize are uh, the symbol of Eros, kind of god of protection, the symbol of Doran uh, and Koros, classically kind of natural um, and, and guidance-based uh, deities. Um, there are uh, two others that you're like vaguely familiar with, but like you don't know enough to say what they are. And then one is, uh, the last one is the symbol of Zara, um, this goddess of luck and fortune. Cool. Uh, from this kind of temple area, the hall now having looped around one side reconnects with the other side of this uh, metallic dome, um, which he kind of gestures to um, as uh, he's like about to say something. He's like, We'll come back to that. And he continues this path forward um, along the backside. And you see another set of uh, doors lead to another kind of round on the other side to create a, the figure eight of this place. Um, immediately, he kind of gestures uh, before entering as a uh, path goes off kind of a small, like, not quite single file, but a relatively tight corridor before these doors uh, and says, um, if we ever need a quick exit out or uh, a way in that we can't get through the hall, there's uh, some sewer access, but uh, easier to get out than in. So try not to use it if you don't need to. Okay. Pushes through the doors on this side um, into immediately like a long widespread workshop. There are uh, a dozen work tables of tinkering tools and various elements of projects. You see bits and pieces of different cogs, gears, and metal all working in uh, kind of conjunction <clears throat> and different stages of being worked on. Uh, the um, there, are, there are basically all kinds of manner of tools in here, with the exception, you notice, of a smithy or furnace. Um, there's no, no notable signs of anything like that. Um, but Basically, any other kind of uh, simple tool would be found within this room in some stage. Maybe pieces of it may not be in, in full uh, use or repair, but uh, it's a pretty uh, expansive uh, workshop uh, and, and a little bit of a section that's like a little bit of a lab. You can, you, uh, some of you notice herbalism and um, alchemy mm -hmm. elements um, available, though not in full. And uh, not a lot of material components, uh, though there are some very common ones that you can immediately kind of recognize a couple elements of. <clears throat> Decrane, you could clean your wheel star thing here if you needed to. I keep it clean already, but it's a good point. Why does that make me worried? It's just the way he says it, it just makes me so worried. <laughs> you never know when someone needs to be separated from their head. You get used to it, honestly. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> Can you keep the tour going, Isaac? Just keep it going. Keep it moving. He's barely stopped um, oh, and about... already has continued on to push to the next set of doors <clears throat> um, where you see another four uh, sleeping quarters. Um, so there are four on each side of this kind of facility of this room, the Nexus. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, as he makes his way around this second curve um, at the end, after this like fourth room, as he's kind of now kind of quickly just gesturing to room, 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 um, you make your way around and there is a, <clears throat> a sunken uh, like fighting pit training area um, that you can see. There's a half wall barrier along like the kind of outer path that you've been on uh, where it drops down in. And on the back side, there's actually a balcony kind of viewing area that overlooks the pit on the other side of where you're walking now. Um, you can see there's a little extension of the pit that's set up with uh, ranged targets, um, simple weapons rack and a grindstone for sharpening blades. Um, and then uh, at the end of this hall, you see the other double doors that would lead back to the foyer you saw when you first entered. And as Isaac is like on his way there, um, he pauses and turns back to you all. Just like about to go through the double doors. Says, um, actually before we get to the vault, um, you've been tested by Mr. Nostov and 
you stated you encountered a lot in your short adventuring time, but I've yet to see you all in uh, in action. Kind of looks left and right. Given what you're headed into, uh, I need to make sure you can kind of punch above your weight class when needed, of course. Everyone in the ring. He starts to make his way towards the fighting pits. Just... Uh, can I, uh, I just, I walk up, I want to, I want to walk right up to him, like get into his face and be like, I'll do your test. If anything happens to any of us, I'll throw you in that ring. It should never come out. Well, the shit talking game is here. That's good. But let's see if you can back it up with some action. All you have to do, draw a drop of my blood. Catch me on my back foot. He drops a uh, a long sword that you can immediately see as he draws. You see it ripple with kind of uh, crystalline frost and ice. And he flicks it and you see uh, a series of icicles kind of into the wall where he flicks it. And don't die. And he rushes. Everyone roll initiative. Before they start, you motherfucker. Amy kind of raises her hand and goes, well, we win. And I'm saying that because I know we're going to win. Can I play with your stash after? As he rushes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, let's go! <clears throat> oh, God. Okay. Your dice redeemed itself, Al. Okay, initiative. Oh, excellent. Dirty 20. Oh, fuck. Look at this shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Looks like something out of Spartacus. <clears throat> Q drone shot. The crane, you specifically said you were in his face, therefore you were positioned right there. But the rest of you, uh, okay. I will allow you to kind of position yourselves as loosely as you wish down into this fighting pit area. When we come to your initiative, I suppose you can feel free to just kind of call it where you want to go. So as we kick things off, Augustus, where do you want to be placed? I, I was very nervous, so I'm going to be hanging back probably. I could just stay right there. <laughs> Okay. I, I would have looked at Andy. I think we both looked way more nervous than the other two um, chaos members of our party. So I will just have stayed there, especially when <laughs> I was going to say Hondo, especially when Decrane rushed in and started shit talking. I would just watch that and confused as to what to do. I will activate uh, Ray. Mm -hmm. I think that's my action. Let me just check that quick. As an action, yeah, kind of nervous and not knowing what to do. I'll look at Ray. She'll glow bright, kind of like circle around me and getting ready into like battle mode. And then I think I will just um, run over to Enid and maybe hop down on those steps, kind of trying to get out of his line of sight with that pillar. And you want um, Ray to follow you? Yeah, yeah, she'll just be within like five feet, we could say. Oh, little Ray, look at this little cutie. Uh, okay, that is your action. Do you want to take all the way down to get like cover behind the pillar from? Yeah, let's do it. And I will shout. Um, we really don't have to do this, Mister Isaac. You got it. That's your action. Uh, no bonuses. No bonus. We're all good. You got it, Decrane. We come to you, sir. Actually, Kyle, right. can I can I say one thing, especially with yeah. this amateur muted? I'll cast a uh, bless using my like once a day bless. You use your action to activate. Uh, oh shit! You're totally right. I thought it was a bonus. Yeah. Okay. Then nothing. I'm I'm all good. Uh, no worries. Okay. Uh, Decrane, we come to you. He has his longsword out, right? He has a longsword drawn. Yes. Okay. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go for the fireworks yet. I'm gonna use my my sim my sim yeah scimitar my scimitar. You gotta go ahead and make a tie roll. Okay, solid. Five, and that is plus one. Yeah, great. Uh, plus one? That can't be right. Apparently. Uh, Basically, it was using your strength, which is teeny tiny. Uh, I mean, you still rolled a four, so. It's probably not going to but. Uh, <laughs> you, so now yeah. it's 10. Now it's 10. <laughs> yeah, you Isaac, you see nine. <laughs> Uh, you still do miss, but it's good to have that uh, solidified. So if you refresh now, you should see plus five, two d four, plus three. Oh, perfect! As you draw the uh, double bladed scimitar and kind of spin it round, ready to make your first slash down, it's a little slower, a little clunkier than you would love. And with his sword already out, very easily just kind of bats it away, <laughs> and then takes a uh, almost like a fencer's stance. 
uh, in like a protective kind of uh, ready to ready to block, ready to move uh, position. But there's still some like weight. It's not quite as as light and airy as a fencer. They're still like ready to uh, strike, um, kind of air to him. That's your uh, attack. It's your action. You have a bonus, and do you want to stay there? Well, I mean, if I move anywhere, I disengage, right? Uh, you would, uh, yeah, risk and attack. Okay. So yeah, I don't want to. Can I move a bit further out without disengaging, or is it like I'm stuck there? You can circle him, but you can't move away from uh, anywhere out of five feet. Okay, uh, well, I'm just going to stay where I am. Um, in terms of bonus, uh, I don't even think there's anything I can really do. Like, I can't, Not until I can't you're really second. attack him or anything, right? Uh, no, unfortunately, yeah, so. Yeah, okay, that's good. That is the end of Crane's turn. Enid, we come to you. Get him, Enid. Get. Okay, so she's all excited. So she's just going <laughs> to hop in there immediately and mm. whip out her bow and just shoot it and aim uh, at it. Okay. Where do you want, like, just from where you are right here, just like jumping to the corner? Yeah, so like she's trying to show off. So as she's kind of jumping down, she just like almost Legolas style. Uh, okay, here's uh, to do a little jump. Give me, yeah. as, uh, if you're cool with it, using yeah. your bonus action to do some like cool flare acrobatics. Absolutely. And then an action attack. Sure. So acrobatics first, see how cool it, the opener is as you leap down the steps. Okay. Uh, 13. Uh, so, not great. You know, like it, you know, you're not a, uh, a 10 out of 10 gymnast, but that was still a pretty cool, like, tumble roll, pop up, fire uh, moment. Uh, as you do fire, go ahead and make your attack roll. Uh, 22 to hit. The Hell 22 yeah. does, in fact, hit. Uh, and go ahead and roll damage. And piercing damage is 5. Okay. Uh, yeah, as the. Uh, <clears throat> tumble, roll, and fire, you do strike, um, and from the kind of parry of um, Decrane, Isaac spins and uh, chops the arrow like clean in half out of the air, um, but it does kind of force him to kind of turn in a way that uh, he seems like he has to like readjust himself. Not quite fully like fall into his back foot or anything like that, um, but enough out of position that if uh, there was a more coordinated attack, like you all could have got a, a good strike in on him. It was a, took him off guard. Perhaps it was the tuck and roll that did it. It kind of gives you a little bit of a nod. Is that, uh, are you gonna stay there? Yeah, she's gonna stay there. And that takes us to Isaac. Isaac is going to kind of survey the scene, goes to look in Augustus's direction, doesn't really say anything to him. He doesn't have full contact on him. Uh, Decrane, you're right there. I appreciate the, uh, the candor. And he looks over at uh, Enid and that wasn't bad. He points up at uh, Andy and says, you gotta move your feet. Then he is going to use a bonus action to utter a, a string of curses beneath his breath and Enid, you feel an icy chill run down your spine. <sighs> uh, as you fall under his merciless curse. <gasps> what the fuck is that? Does this does this pop anything on detect magic? Like, do I see uh, anything? I mean, yeah, his sword is magical. His chest armor beneath his kind of attire, you can see, is kind of blinking with magic. And he just cast not a spell, but a magical effect, for sure. That's his bonus action. And then with his action, uh, he is going to swing the longsword down towards the crane. So funny that my immediate impulse got said, you should say counterspell as soon as Kyle started talking about a spell. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I don't have thirds. I was thinking for me, but it's good. I know. <laughs> Eventually. Wait, where did Kev go? He uh, died. He said you killed him. So you just <laughs> he refused to participate. I did not pack the right spells today for this guy. <clears throat> I, uh, I didn't either. Um, that's okay. He's going to actually, uh, because Kev's not here, um, I'm going to shift my attack over to Enid as he goes, like, almost to begin to attack the crane, but spins, and with his offhand, you see um, energy begin to kind of unfurl from under his, like, um, under his coat arm, his sleeve, um, and then whips out, wraps around your waist, and pulls you in towards him as you suffer a little bit of force damage. Yet you suffer eight points of force damage. 
Okay. And you are pulled 10 feet towards him. Uh, and then he is going to um, do the same to Andy as he kind of spins around this side of the crane. And it's going to whip up, uh, kind of like spinning off the crane, same energy in Andy's direction. Uh, that is going to be, is that a nine or a six? Nine. Uh, 17 to hit. I don't even have major armor on. <clears throat> uh, he is going to do the exact same thing to you. That is 10 points of force damage. Boy. And you are also pulled to uh, go ahead and make just a, a make a dexterity save for me. No, this. Oh, gosh. It's 15. Oh, 15. You're fine. Uh, no, I just forgot my dex is so low. <laughs> you feel the energy kind of begin to like pull you forward, uh, but with your like, um, you know, you have a good center of gravity, you have good control of your body. Uh, you do manage to stop yourself from falling fully flat on your face permanently. Um, <clears throat> Kev's still not here, uh, but I'm going to attack him anyways because it's uh, part of DD. Fuck that guy. <laughs> uh, and with the uh, roll, actually wasn't great anyways, a 13 to hit. Uh, I don't know what I got him. I, I got him here. It's 14. Just misses. <clears throat> uh, as he comes back, uh, Isaac just slices down, uh, and Decrane, you're able to just sidestep out of uh, out of the way. And he does kind of give uh, as he steps back, not you know more than five feet to provoke opportunity attacks, um, but as he just steps back, uh, it kind of very casual like this is not a i'm going to kill you fight it's a very casual situation um he steps back kind of rocking onto his back heel for a second before re kind of taking his fencing stance long sort of tip out towards you to crane but kind of a nod in in your direction of like okay not terrible andy we come to you okay i uh that hurt and i I'm going to have to use my turn to cast Mage Armor, I think. Okay, this is your action. Uh, do you move? Do you stay? Where do you go? No, I'm going to move because he gave me shit about not moving. So I'm going to try to go towards the pillar as well, I think. And because she's so yeah. used to it, I'll catch. I'll cast it when I'm behind the pillar. Cause she's so used to just doing it out of sight. She's not even really doing it. Yeah, for sure. Purposely. You sprint over there easily. You have cover. Um, I will point out now, Augustus, you do not have full cover. You would have half cover just with some of the stairs and your and your height. You are a little lower, so you do actually have some cover from that lower stair. Cool. But uh, he would have line of sight on you from the pillar. Uh, but Andy, you would be more in that kind of half three quarter cover situation. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, action, no bonuses. Good to go. I only have one bonus action, and it doesn't make sense. So uh, that's it. Sounds good, Augustus. Uh, seeing him grab Enid, uh, now he's going to get pissed and his his docile demeanor is going to immediately change. So uh, not even thinking about it, he's going to rush towards Isaac. I'm going to have the staff out behind me and the flames are going to like lick along his arm and start to like go into uh, the staff and it's going to glow a bit and I'm going to cast Flame Blade. Mm. Uh, so that's a bonus action. Mm hmm. The Flame Blade. Um, yeah, in mine, it'll probably almost be like a scythe out of the the staff itself, some sort of like fiery thing to do with the staff. But not going to get there yet because um, I can't reach to attack him. So it's just going to like ignite as he rushes forward. And maybe if that's a bonus, could I still cast a cantrip? Uh, yes. Then I'll just throw flame at him here. <clears throat> with produce flame? Yes, uh, it's not good. It's only 12. Yeah, unfortunately, just in the in the series of actions, the flame goes a little wide, and he moves ever so slightly, like very, very, turn the shoulder as it flies over past him with barely a glance. I still kind of fix currently on Decrane actually, as he's the the closest to him, not quite taking you. Although he kind of gives you know a little eyebrow raise with the with the fire, but doesn't. My little it. ears would go down, perks back, mm. and I would say, "You mess with her, you mess with me." And that's it for my turn. The eyebrow raise is about the full response you get <laughs> as we go to Crane. I also raise it up because uh, I wasn't expecting that from him. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you do? Let's go. I'm still not ready yet. I want to go mano to mano, mano y mano. Let's pull out the long sword. Okay. Or actually, in my case, I think it's a rapier. Yes, yeah. rapiers. 
Yeah, you could. Um... <clears throat> so you just you just like fuck the scimitar. I'll I'll go one sword with this guy. Is that the play? I'm like, I love it. And I toss it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. It scatters into the sand beside you as you draw the, the uh, rapier and the swords clash. Uh, go ahead and make your attack. Boom. Yes, there you go. Hit him. Plus, uh, I think it's five, yes. Yeah, uh, that's going to hit. Go ahead, and roll. go ahead and roll damage. All right. Uh, it is 1d8 plus three. Six total, I guess. Six three and three. Points. You got it. Uh, with the clash, um, you do kind of uh, go for like a, a swipe, um, and he does like he dodges it, but you do push him into like a um, a defensive, like fallen back position where he has to like regain uh, his ground. And he says, uh, "Not bad. A little, um, little forward. A little too obvious." Uh, that's your action. Bonus action. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so I'm, 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 I'm I want to get him surrounded. So maybe I will move just slightly over to his other side, just so that that everyone has him covered, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. As you kind of make your attack and reposition, um, as he looks around to uh, now trying to guard on both sides. All right. So you do a uh, have an inkling of what you're all doing. Good to know. Um, is that the end of your turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ina, we come back to you. Okay. Um, I'm still going to use my longbow. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to shoot him again and be like, that hurt, but I'm going to end up playing with those toys. You hear me? Uh, uh, now, as he's kind of gotten a little lower in his stance to like, you know, guard on both sides. He looks up at you, uh, and you see like his his offhand fingers are kind of beginning to like trace uh, a sigil, just like in preparation. She's not thinking, so she it's so a thirteen to hit. The thirteen does not hit. Okay. Um, and as it kind of is is fired towards him, just because it's kind of fun in this way. Yeah. Um, to Crane, make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, killed a crane. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, as as uh, he got low for the shot, you fire. <clears throat> Actually, probably be uh, higher, but regardless, uh, well enough to you fire the shot uh, without fully thinking of the crane beyond him, um, and rather than deflect the the shot or um, catch it or do anything like that. He like matrix level dodges and the arrow pierces towards Decrane and Decrane you're forced to like fully duck and dodge um, out of the way as the arrow splinters against the stone on the back. Sorry. I just nod. (laughs) Uh, You see Isaac, he turns back to you Decrane as you stand up to full uh, and he looks over at you Enid and says, those mistakes can kill. These are very serious grave tone. Jeez. She'll just kind of go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, you can't learn if you don't make a mistake. Yeah, what he said. Uh he is is that the end of your turn? Or do you want to move uh, or use yeah. a bonus? No, that's good. Uh before he uh takes before he responds, he's gonna uh try and Kick the legs out from under you, Ducrane. Go ahead and make an acrobatics or athletics check. 14. Uh, what's your bonus? Uh, for athletics or... Did you say or, or just athletics? Your choice, athletics or acrobatics. Okay, acrobatics is better. So plus five. Ah, okay. Uh, he, like, kicks out to sweep under your leg. However, you are dexterous, and you manage to, like, fully leap over and, and hold your ground. Um, but as he, like, swept the leg, he take off. You do get an attack opportunity, should you wish. I will take it, yeah. I'm going to go with the crossbow. Oh, it's a melee attack, sorry. Oh, sorry, okay, then the rapier. Uh, and I rolled... So I love the idea of using every weapon you have on your body to try and get this guy. <laughs> I rolled uh, a two. In, in, you know, he, 
he takes the, he moves quick. So by the time you're leaping to like leap over his leg, he's already moved and you, you swipe out, but the, the distance unfortunately is not there. He takes off forward um, and is going to kind of uh, swing towards um, Augustus. Yeah, fucking try it, pal. That's a 15 to hit. 15 is my AC. That's going to be uh, six points of slashing damage. Okay. And an additional six points of cold damage for 12 total. Ooh, chilly. Uh, and then is going to uh, make his attack uh, against Enid. Uh, is a lot. Uh, 27 to hit. Oh my yep. god. <laughs> uh, and as part of this attack, he like more than like di- like you know hits you with the blade. Um, he like brings the butt after hitting um, Augustus. He brings the butt up to like clobber the side of your like head, like, and it's more just like a bludgeoning um, hit. Um, just go ahead and make a Constitution saving throw for me. Nineteen. Okay. Uh, he clocks you good. Um, you do still take six, nope, seven points of bludgeoning damage, but you are not dazed. You're able to, like, you know, very quickly catch your, your faculties. Uh, didn't catch you on the temple quite quite pure. Um, you were able to kind of shield yourself a little bit. Uh, and e- then... Enid, you still up? You still up? Uh, if, if there was such a thing as hit points, I think I'd be at, like... <laughs> Three. <laughs> okay, great. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> uh, as, as you are dazed, but and like you know, your bow nearly falls from your hand, but you hold. You're beginning to kind of, you know, you're not losing a lot of blood, but you are getting kind of very woozy here. Uh, he just looks at you and says, "Walk it off," and then turns into mist and shadow. Fuck this guy. And. Oh, there's a balcony. Oh, my God. As he takes a breather, puts his hands on his hips, looks down at you. Not bad. Not enough. Keep going. Andy, we come to you. Okay. Um, I'm going to come around the pillar because I can't see what's going on. I'm going to come around clockwise. What do, do I see him? Can I see him up there? Yes, he talked. You hear he like, his from voice come from, from up there. Um, he would have half cover. It, it's not like it's, you know, a big huge wall it would just come up to like about his waist um so you you do see him how far am i i can't tell from here i know 5 10 15 20 25 30 about 30 35 feet okay um okay i'm gonna uh, see him and look everyone near me i can get us up there uh, let's you get him down here if that's if that's oh, the answer. I like that too. <laughs> we're kind of hurt, and I think Nettie might need a second. So I could be wrong, but maybe I'll try that next turn. I'm just gonna try Mind Sliver. Okay. It's an intelligence save. Uh, you got. That's a 19. Oh fuck. Great. That was my action. And okay. I don't have bonus actions, so that's it. Okay. What does it look like when you attempt this? Um. I think it's just it's through it's just a cantrip, so it's just through the astrolabe. Everything just kind of glows up her arm a little bit, and it's it's just to him. Well, he succeeded, so it doesn't really matter. But it's just trying to like force a deja vu moment or like a alternate reality vision of like something bad happening in their future that may or may not happen. But it um, this one. as you as you begin the incantation, though, and, and the light begins to flow, he, his eyes are drawn to you. You watch his brow furrow for a moment. Um, and like, you know, easy, kind of shake his head off, adjust himself ready for the next round. But he kind of gives like a knowing nod in your direction. That makes her nervous and she takes a step back. Well, no, I need to see everyone. Never mind. I need, I, I need to be able to stand where I can see everybody. Great. Right in the middle. Excellent. Okay. Uh, that's my turn. That's my turn. Top of the round, Augustus. Seeing Nettie go down like that, uh, seeing Andy's thing and seeing this guy kind of like taunt us or whatever, I will uh, take three steps towards um, to Crane. Mm-hmm. Like in, within, mm-hmm. like within. Yeah. And I'll say something like, um, I can be strong if we have to protect each other. 
and then I'll look to Ray and I'll grab him and we'll teleport uh, up to land next to Isaac in a little swirling trace of fire. And as we come down, trying to be as cool as he can, and come on, dice, don't fuck me, because uh, that's just a bonus action from Ray, I'm going to try and swipe at this guy, if you'd allow that order of movement. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So I'm going to use... Flame Blade. Does 17 hit? Uh, 17 does not hit. <clears throat> you bring so the I... blade down. <laughs> Just slap uh, it into his sword, and he just he just full on like blocks it one hand block like your your blades catch and the sword of fire and his blade encrusted with ice give off a very cool lightsaber clash uh, as sparks and and icicles shatter in the air as you come down fully, the crane kind of landing in full ray, <laughs> peering behind. He says, and then Augustus. That. Okay, good. Go. He was gonna say, now that's a move. And Not too of, obvious. The Cray do something. <laughs> uh, he kind of throws your your blade down. You know, kind of the spinning move of uh, of separating your two weapons uh, as he again readjusts for a uh, melee position. <clears throat> the Crane, do come to you. Uh, I'm going to. In so I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull out my rapier with one hand. And. I'm going to make it look like I'm coming into strike, and then I'm going to discreetly have my pistol pulled out. And oh, yeah. <laughs> I will say one thing. You are okay. in melee, therefore uh, range attacks have a disadvantage. Um, however, what I'll, I'll give you is we'll do a little bonus here. Um, if you burn your bonus action to basically force a feint, as you're trying to like deceive with your rapier, like you're trying to describe this, I'll let you do that as a bonus section to negate the disadvantage. I'll take it. Hell okay. yeah. Give me a de uh, deception check first using the bonus okay. versus I won't roll. It'll just be his passive insight or perception. They're both the same actually, it doesn't matter. Oh, this kills me. A oh, one. Wow. Not one. Never have nice things. <laughs> it's tough stuff out here. Uh, unfortunately, he is a he's a seasoned combatant, um, and uh, as like he knows your skill sets, he knows already what you can do. Uh, he just wants to see you properly in action. Um, and as the feint is perhaps not quite as smooth as you would like, already he sees the weapon coming, and you see already like he's beginning to work on moving out of the way and, and preparing a, a counter with his blade. You can still make your attack, just a disadvantage. Okay. Yo, get him! You can do it. Get him. Uh, so first roll. Come on, dice. Four? Fuck mm. dice. Fucking dice. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, great work, dice. <laughs> Second roll, 11. Uh, unfortunately, the, um, the four is what we have to take here. As the, as the feint just didn't play, he you fire and you do splinter the, the stone of this kind of barrier. But unfortunately, you don't catch him uh, as he moves out of the way. Um, and he's already kind of looking down at the pistol, like ready to like go for a disarm. Uh, he's, uh, but he kind of gives like a kind of a shoulder shrug of like, well, at least you tried. It's just like the movies. They never hit in the first goal, right? Oh, that was cool, man. Was cool it, was a, it was a dope move. I love like, that's the kind of shit that I want to like do more of. Like, I don't care about bending the rules to like make something happen. I still want there to be like an action economy element, but like, that's fucking awesome. I want to try Let's it. do cool shit. Let's do some <laughs> cool shit. Uh, unfortunately, though, that does burn your action bonus. Do you want to stay there or move? Okay. Nope, I'm good there. Uh, Ina, we do come to you. Uh, <laughs> um, out of a desperate attempt, um, she's going to... Uh, so essentially, I'm casting uh, Summon Beast, but it's Ooh, okay. summoning Toot Sweet. Okay. Because sure. it's that's the beast with it. Um, so she'll just be like Toot Sweet. <laughs> she'll like tweak her her belly button ring so he comes out, uh, and then she'll just be like, Get him, get him. And then uh, so can I send <laughs> Toot Sweet to like bite his ankles? Yeah, of course you can. Is Tootsweet the little, like, what Oric was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that little Tressum or whatever, whatever that thing yeah, is called? Yeah, it's a Tressum. 
I don't have oh. a little flying squirrel, but a flying cat is close enough. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and ahead and make uh, an attack for Toot Sweet. Come on, Toot Sweet. Nat twenty, Toot Sweet. Does Toot Sweet have stats? What are Toot Sweet's stats? He said dire uh, bear stats. Not. Uh, oh, what's this? Uh, bu- 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 oh, five to hit. Oof. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Isaac not prepared for a squirrel bite, but just quick enough to to look down and see a bite coming and just kind of move his foot ever so slightly. Um, as actually, uh, he actually lifts it up and, and puts it kind of onto the uh, edge of the, the wall, like stepping up, like that was actually, like he kind of, both Augustus and Decran, you both look at the face, it's like very unexpected <laughs> to see this little squirrel here. There is a look of, there's a moment of pause. Us too, us too. <laughs> I, I like to just pick the, the cinematic moment of yeah like he lifts it up looks down at the squirrel and all three of you over the balcony looking down at Enid with kind of like a that was the plan that, that was, was it that was the plan and Enid just like clutching her like you know head just <laughs> just double birds <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's right uh, unfortunately that is your action and bonus to get the attack do you want to stay there or do you want to move uh yeah, I'll start trekking my way over slowly. Sure. All I want is the tiny squirrel to flip him off. It's he right. is for sure. He is for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like doing the chitter, the angry chitter <laughs> yeah. of a squirrel when he's pissed off at you. <laughs> I have to find squirrel sound effects. I'll put some in here. Fortunately, Too Sweet does not pull the, the move off. We do come to Isaac's turn with his foot up on the edge of the rail and looking down. At the bite, he looks kind of around at all of you and says, I think one more shot. Uh, and he leaps from the edge of the balcony. Both uh, Decrane and uh, Augustus, you guys get a tax opportunity. Fuck yeah. Let's get him. Got to make him bleed. I don't want to like... <laughs> with the rapier. Go ahead. Let, let me roll. Boom. 18. Out of boy. That'll hit. And you, D D Beyonce. Another eight. So I rolled a five. Ooh, plus nice. three, so eight coins. Nice. Uh, and flame blade. Just ten. Just ten for me. Uh, unfortunately, not gonna not gonna Just swing out. Slam it in the railing. <laughs> um, and as Isaac leaps from the balcony, he spins in the air and. Uh, from the tip of the blade and from his offhand, you see that energy that wrapped around Enid wrap around, uh, attempts to wrap around both uh, Augustus and Crane as he rips you both off with him. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> this guy's cool as hell. Uh, against Crane. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a natural 18. And against Augustus. Uh, not as good. 12 to hit. Just my AC? No, 15. Uh, yeah, he is going to uh, yank the crane alongside him. I'll say Ray shoves me backwards to avoid it. Uh, I like the idea more of Ray kind of taking, like swooping in and just like where it's 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 partially ice and shadow um, cool. of his energy. She just like flares with light and melts and dissipates the energy. Love that. Uh, as you like shield yourself with your flame blade, you look away and already he's leapt over the edge and the crane is being pulled past you. Like you don't even get to see the full effect of what she did. Uh, the crane, you do suffer. <clears throat> Ooh, uh, nine points of force damage. Oh boy, the crane. That's, uh, that's good. You still up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely up. But that's... I then need you to make an acrobatic check for me as you are now falling the yeah, uh, like 30 feet of the um, balcony. Don't my cat-like reflexes help? Well, that's why your deck like, is decent. Yeah, uh, you're a tabaxi? Seven. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Guess not. Uh, seven in acrobatics, did you say? Yeah, yes, acrobatics. Five, so 12. Uh, 12 is not bad. Uh, I'd say that's enough to avoid the full brunt of the uh, a lot of damage. That comes with a fall of 30 feet. Oh, geez. All right. Well, I say a lot of damage and then I roll a bunch of ones. So what is going to be, what would have been 13 points of bludgeon damage becomes 
uh, six points of bludgeoning damage. And you land in a cool guy three point stance. All right, I'll take that. As he leaps out, and rather than suffer the damage of the fall, he's going to use his bonus action to misty step from midair directly behind Andy. My lord. Uh, and we'll use his final attack just to kind of try and daze you and clock you in the back of the head. That's a 17 to hit. I'm going to use my reaction. Okay. I have a porn left. <clears throat> Do it. The four. Bam, I don't know what his to hit is. Huh? Do you not have I one? used I used one to stop us from losing the strip of paper to the fire. Right. I'll use the other one. Okay, so you use the four. Uh, the four does turn his attack into a 12. No, it doesn't hit. I think she'd just grip her astrolabe and like focus on a tattoo that's on her arm, and then it slowly disappears. And he has a sense of deja vu. Yeah, he lands behind, and in his mind, he took the attack and landed it. But then as he lands, he like re-envisions the landing and he just never took the third attack. Like the, he was held in place. He didn't swing a third time. There is a moment um, where he looks at you as he notices the light dissipate. Now that's a good trick. Right from behind you and then is going to end his turn. Top of the round. No, sorry, Andy, we come to you. Okay. I did not pack combat spells today. <laughs> Uh, um, so I'm going to, uh, try to hit him with my stick. Wow. <laughs> it's a shirt. magic thing. Yeah, it's a cantrip. Go ahead and make Just your attack. With a stick. I gotcha. I was like, damn, we, <laughs> we really packed no spells. <laughs> no, I mean, admittedly, I packed all the being in the city spells, not the yeah. gonna fight shit spells. I have catapult, but he's like a Dexy guy and he's just gonna make that save, True. so. Okay. That actually might hit. Uh, 23. Yeah, it definitely hits. Okay. Andy's the, the one who draws blood, smashes him with her staff. My big ass stick that glows a little bit weird. You could do it. Get him. Five damage. Five total um, damage. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a cantrip. Um, mm -hmm. It's radiant. I don't know if that means anything. Uh, it doesn't ultimately change anything, um, but uh, where you, in the in the series of events, using the fourteen to kind of throw him off, and in that moment of that deja vu, even though he's he said like that was a good move, there's still that like kind of off-putting moment, uh, and you do crack him right straight in the face, like top skull nose, and he just oh. Uh, and you see a yes. trickle of blood slip down his nose. He reaches his offhand up and wipes away the blood. Actually, I'm sorry. It was I did like a reaction. It really scared me. No, it was good. Okay. All right, everyone. Not bad. Not good. But at least you know which way to well, aim the pointy end. So that's a start. I think we got that out of the way. And um, you've got some uh, you got some moves. I'm impressed. Come on, let's get you up to speed. Uh, he walks over and uh, Enid kind of helps you up to your feet if you were down even a little bit. Um, <clears throat> says, uh, we got something for that, don't worry. I am going to... I'll fiery, fiery appear beside him in another teleport, very sternly looking at him. And I'll put a hand on my sister and be like, we're fine. And I'm going to put a cure wounds level two into you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Burn your spell slots, I don't care. Uh, and he <laughs> continues up the stairs. <laughs> Nettie, you get uh, seven plus four is 11 HP. Oh, back. oh thank you. At some point or long rest. No, let's fight him again. Fuck this guy. Let's keep going. <laughs> Provided let's everyone going. else ceases the fight. He does continue through the double doors back into the foyer. Um, <clears throat> and as you kind of... Uh, it was a short fight, but you do feel some of the sting of the wounds, uh, some of the pride burned. Um, he does lead you uh, <clears throat> across the foyer again and up the uh, right side stairs to the hall into 
uh, another set of double doors that lead inside this central metallic dome. Uh, you notice that the doors themselves are also metal and, and uh, a part of this of this dome. <clears throat> all all is one kind of piece. Um, he stops and turns. <clears throat> This is what we've come to call the um, the Vigilant Vault, uh, the heart of the Alliance's inner workings. Hopefully this will shed some light on things and get you set up for the next adventure. He pushes through the double doors of this thick metal into the vault room. Uh, and on the other side, you see Ludomir is adjusting a tray of tea and coffee along with various fixings at the head of an impressive table in the center of the room. The interior of this central chamber continues that same metallic element as the doors. Iron or lead framing, support beams and wall panels uh, continue the full length up to the domed ceiling. Um, the entire room and the floor is met metallic. In the middle of the room stands this massive oval table of heavy wood uh, and around it sit a dozen hardback manor chairs. Uh, across from this entrance is an identical pair of doors that stand shut currently, and around the room, on the outskirts of the, the curved uh, room, you can see a half dozen sitting areas, drawing tables, built-in shelving with various decanters and books and tools. However, the most impressive piece beneath a, a globular chandelier that hangs in the middle of the room is the scale topographical map of Vigil that sits sunken within the heart of the table. Mountains, rivers, forests, desert, jungle, all painstakingly recreated in wood, stone, and metal. The borders of each kingdom are marked as are cities with varying size markers and colored flags or pins. And rising from about two dozen points are these thin spires of white crystal, each about a half inch in circumference, four or five inches tall from wherever they stand on the map. And each is kind of gently pulsating with light. Ludomir gestures for each of you to have a seat wherever you wish around the table. And Isaac begins to offer you all drinks as you settle in. Uh, he currently pours, pours Nasta a, a cup from a silver coffee press and passes him a, a small pitcher of cream, this copper pitcher. And Nasta begins to kind of serve himself coffee as uh, Isaac, as I said, comes around to each of you, get you anything you, you want to drink as <clears throat> Nasta begins to explain. Uh, as I'm sure Isaac has uh, stated to you, this is the heart of the Infinite Alliance. This room is the home to the world's only divining network. As much as I care for the old ways, some advancements in technology have proven quite useful in improving on former designs. But in uh, simple terms, <clears throat> utilizing crystalline arcana craft, these divining roads tap into the flow of potential across vigil to detect drastic fluctuations and premonitions of prospective catastrophe on which we may act and with luck intercede before it is too late. The divining roads have been painstakingly produced by an expert of her craft, both arcane and precognitive. Each road here, gesturing to the 24 on the map, has a sister road in the same place within the world. Each is paired by unique runic marking that links them, and we have fine-tuned their responses to only tap into the spectrum when a strong enough negative potential is foreseen. That which is divined is then translated to these receiver roads, where they begin to alight with a color associated with severity perceived. From here, we can then take these roads to our decoding device and begin the process of translation and deciphering. As you may know, Recognition is never quite so straightforward. It is often couched in symbolism and metaphor, and with much room for error and altercation. It is a very difficult art to master, and it's not always as simple as watching vision manifest before you. Some are simply auditory. Some are told out of order, out of focus. Some almost as if being siphoned away as you watch like grains of sand through your hands. Nevertheless, once we have managed to decipher meaning, we pinpoint the location to the best of our abilities and move to intercept and alter the foreseen calamity. Um, Isaac finishes and uh, seats himself uh, and Ludomir kind of continues standing at this point. Um, um, but as you kind of look over this map, um, what do you do? 
just fa- like I don't think Andy's ever actually heard of anyone else who's properly a diviner. It is just immediately zoned in on how this thing works, trying to trying to science it out, and and is just fascinated and wants to play with it, but won't. <laughs> Are these? I'll point at one of the like white diviner rods. Are these that big in the other place? Like, was there a tiny one in Grill somewhere that we didn't see? Uh, not quite in Grill, uh, but in the area. And the ones in the field, the proper divining rods, uh, they're quite uh, much larger than these receiving rods. They're about uh, two and a half feet uh, in length and two or three square inches in, uh, in width. Um, but they're often uh, specifically hidden away from interaction with man or beast to try and maintain their secrecy as well as uh, protect them. So this is why when Isaac recruited us for you, he just said something bad's going to happen and we should go try and stop it. Indeed. The premonition we received to send uh, you all in the direction of Gleel was one... Uh, couched in in mist and shadow we did not uh, could not see what it would ultimately lead to but we were given a dire warning needed to be seen to who who gets it is it like a vision, or is it something written down, or is it a spooky heebie jeebie feeling? Each is delivered differently. And um, when they come to these receiving roads here, we use a device to decode what is perceived by the dividing roads in the field. Some are uh, illusory picture, vision, premonition. Some come as um, simply auditory. Um, some must be translated, some must be deciphered and decoded. Some is simply imagery, flash. You must sit through and piece together. You, 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 do you do that? Is it we? Is that you? Well, primarily, it, it's um, myself, Isaac, of course. Um, if there are other um, the higher level in in alliance in um, in Carlin, then we um, will always accept their aid. But um, it is more my specialty in deciphering. I may not be a diviner in truth, but I have quite a keen mind. Um, I think as he's explaining what they do, two things. One is I'm going to try to memorize as many locations of these as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, and she might like whatever one's closest, just reach out to it and see if she like, can you feel a hum of magic? And if cool. no one complains, she might touch one. <laughs> if no one tells her not to, it's not a quick grab. So there's plenty of time for him to say no. And she'd listen. Um, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't stop you. Though you, you would notice Isaac kind of, like initially lean forward, but um, Ludimir doesn't, so he doesn't. <clears throat> um, but yeah, as you get closer, I would say also at this point your detect magic has has finished yeah. with the the tour and fight. Um, but as you get closer and closer, you do feel a vibration of magic, a static electricity, a um, a film familiarity to the source. It's like um, striking a note that rings perfectly true. Um, do you reach out and grab one? Yeah, I'd just touch it. I don't think I'd grab, but like, let's put a finger on it. Uh, you touch it. It's. Um, uh, smooth and not hot nor cold. There's no response. 
it continues this kind of faint, like white pulsating up and down. <clears throat> but there's no response. Um, but Ludomir looks across the table at you. He says, it is truly a beautiful feat of uh, Arcana Craft and the, the flow of potential fate and chance is it is wondrous to behold it's incredible um sorry who did this or ah. i'm supposed to know yet no um in fact you will meet them um in due time um as part of this uh, you may notice uh, two of our roads and you do look across of the 24 um there are two that are relatively close together on the map that are not a lit. They do not have the same pulsating light. They just appear as just uh, empty crystalline rods. <clears throat> Two of our receiving rods lay dormant, and thus we come to your task. Nearly six months ago, this divine road, and he points to uh, one on the kind of of the two that is north, and on the map, <clears throat> it's. Um, loosely in the direction of Darkvale Harbor, but it is further south um, and in uh, a mountain range near the peak uh, of the, the northern tip of this mountain range, um, uh, as he goes to describe the Silver Highlands. Um, uh, he points this one. Um, six months ago, this dividing road fell, uh, flared, and then fell dormant. Nearly a month to the day later, this one did the same. And he points to one that is uh, to the west and south um, into Ironhome, on the borders of Ironhome and the Ashen Waste. Um, now the roads uh, sometimes uh, damage through monstrous encounters. In some case, banditry or uh, rare rogue arcanists may tamper with their power. But regardless, that one has fallen dormant is not so rare has to cause panic anyways, but two in such close proximity would imply a link. I hope to find uh, it explained by some natural phenomenon, but the issue still stands. The network is not as effective when there are missing links, and this is where you all come in. I have a replacement rod here, uh, and he gestures off as Isaac has already stood up, and from a table <clears throat> you see he's um, produced a roughly about three foot long. Um, it looks like a sword case, like how you would present a, um, like a fashionable, like well-crafted sword um, is, is kind of the design of the case. Uh, and he lays it down on a section of the table where the map does not uh, intercede and he opens it up <clears throat> and inside um, cushioned in like velvet is a two and a half foot piece of pure crystal. Um, it is is the length of uh, pointed at both ends, and um, it is crystalline. So there are faces that are uh, geometric shaped, and some points that kind of come off in, in broken elements and chunks. Um, however, it is relatively um, smooth and clean, and from within the crystal itself, um, at a pretty close glance, you can see there are. Um, a series of runes etched within the crystal, not in the face, but within the core. Uh, he, uh, he says, I have this replacement road here and another is under commission as we speak. I would have you travel to collect the second road and then with both travel to the divining sites, investigate and find proof uh, of cause of the demise and then replace the defunct crystals with the new sale of this in such a short span does not do justice to the number of risks you may face. But the life that risks is not a life lived. What what are the dangers of these rods falling into the wrong hands? It depends on the hands in which they fall. Should you be found with them in the, um, by the Arcanoclast or other anti-made groups, they are very clearly arcane in nature. And you would be, you would suffer the penalties there. To 
hold and wield and hold these uh, these rods does not uh, directly impose danger. But it is more in the um, more in the travel in which you must go to retrieve the second road. We'll take you into the underworld, the world below this, a place of permanent darkness and uh, every night and many alien threats, as well as the locals are difficult to trust. And to, to re-establish the network in both of the divining sites, we do not know what has occurred in either place, but it would take a, it would take some significance to cause such damage and disturb the sites as it were. It would take a concentrated effort to disrupt the warding circle and uh, more so to destroy a rod completely. We're not sure what has necessarily befallen, but if it is to that degree, it is dangerous. And finally, the secondary site in Iron does border the threats in the ash, which of course carries some significant potential dangers. Yeah. Um, I was going to say we should just destroy the rot. I would disagree. Wait, these ones? All of them. Why? Why would you why would you take this path? Because we don't need them. I don't believe that magic has ever benefited or anyone on this planet. And I don't believe that it would do us any good if they fell into the arcana class hands. I don't disagree that in the wrong hands, a network of precognition could certainly prove fatal, destructive. But this is why they're in our hands. This is why I choose very carefully whom I show these things to. If this is your belief, you may freely have it. We will debate. However, I will respectfully disagree. You know, Andy's magic saved my sister like three days ago when that golem thing almost killed her in the pond. So I think... What about your star wheel, you know? Is the star wheel bad, or is it the person whose hand wields it? The star wheel was not made of magic. No, but it is made to kill. It's a tool. It's all a tool. I say if you haven't if you have the intention to kill, do it with your own hands. Do not hide behind the cover of magic. But I think we're trying to protect people here, not kill them. Precisely. That's the hope. Precisely. Can't at least fall into the wrong hands. Are we complicit? What I will say to hopefully dissuade some concerns. The roads on their own do not carry the precognition as they do as a network. Individually, they are not uh, world enders. They do not see full premonition and precognition on their own, but only in conjunction with the warding circles within which we have painstakingly created in the world. And with the receiving roads here, and with the many years of uh, experience we have in uh, deciphering the divinations therein. Should the network fall into the wrong hands, should the Nexus be found by the Arcana class, to your point, I would freely open the idea of burning it all down, as you say. But until such a day, it serves too great a purpose for a greater good. I, I can see where you're coming from. I will help you on this but I will 
play no part in using them. I appreciate your stance. I appreciate when others uh, oppose something that I believe should never be surrounded by those who only say yes. Now, the um, commission of this uh, secondary divining road, and as I have already stated, the destination where you will receive it. Um, it is a, an intricate and impressive piece of arcana craft combined with uh, significantly rare material components that are required would normally involve too many parties for my preference. Thus, after a long search and much deliberation, an agreement was struck between myself and an inv individual known as Clandestrix. She is a profound practitioner of divination, and as a crystal dragon, the material components and skill to apply the runic magics um, lie well within her abilities, and leaves only uh, one external party, uh, which is a far more acceptable risk. Uh, a question, I, I believe? Dragon? A dragon. Did you say crystal dragon? She's a crystal dragon. Like a if dragon born, or like a dragon? Well, she is, um, I suppose, door born as, as as a dragon, yes, but um, she is, um, well, she's quite, um, not quite as old as me, but uh, she's, uh, she's quite an old crystal dragon, yes. Okay. It's cool. So we're going to go meet a dragon that can divine things and made this incredible network. Okay. She's quite impressive. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, Okay, Kyle, can you spell that for me? Uh, yeah, C-L-A-N-D-E-S-T-R-Y-X. Clandestrix? Clandestrix. Now, as stated, we have, uh, we've made a deal, and uh, you, by my proxy, will be welcome within her lair to meet and exchange payment for the new road. However, a dragon's lair is not uh, necessarily a safe place, even for allies and friends. Many creatures are drawn to the innate uh, power they bear, and hordes accumulated, of course. Um, take care in how you address her as well. Speak with a, a tone as you would the king of Candlon or the high priestess of uh, Serida. Um, uh, Isaac... Uh, he just kind of just, just and Isaac stands up again, <clears throat> and he goes and retrieves a uh, like a jewelry box that's the size of a kind of a small chest. Again, very beautifully like made um, and and adorned wooden box of this kind of rich like red wood um, with gold filigree. He sets that on the table, pretty heavy thunk, um, and also <clears throat> sets down a long wooden staff that has been intricately carved um, in various kind of, um, there, are, uh, there are tons of different kind of totem-like carvings within this uh, within this long staff. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this payment will, uh, has been agreed and uh, will suffice. Uh, to reach for a domain will take you into the underworld, as I said, into a realm known as the Black Sea. There is uh, access into the underworld here in the city, as it uh, as it happens. A secretive tunnel uh, was discovered by an alliance investigation into a narcotics ring at the underworld. Uh, within Lake World, there is a passage that leads below the lake itself and into the belly of the world. From this entry point, travel west by land until you reach the outskirts of a city known as Katmakul. The city itself is uh, best avoided, but uh, used as marker. From here, turn north until you feel the cold of deep wind. In the fields of crystal ice, you will know you have arrived. Any questions? Hmm. Um, how long do you think that would take to, to walk? To get there or the full trip there and back? Maybe just to get to Landestrix first? Oh, um, should be uh, by the Standard travel, uh, a week to Katnakur, and another three to four days north. Well, but uh, ten to eleven days to reach Kondetrix. From there, go on. Complete, uh, sorry, completely underground. Can't see the sun all time. 
Indeed. Um, Augustus would slink back into his chair a bit. Uh, is, um, so after this part's done, are we to go directly to the next station? Are we supposed to come back here? No, preferably once both roads have been, uh, uh, collected, it would be best and most expedient to move to uh, immediately, um, reconnect the network. Um, again, as I, as I said, the two fallen sites, um, the first lies at the peak of the Silver Highlands, and the second runs closer to the dangers of the Ashen Wastes, um, in the uh, setting shadow of Ilderfold, there is a town built uh, around a geothermal hot spring called Brunder Kiln. There is a waterfall that feeds the lower pools, and behind which is a hidden cavern in which the Warding Circle of the Divining Roads is hidden. So what do we do? Is there, like, something that has to happen? Do we just stick it in there? Uh, in a manner of speaking, um, when it comes to applying the new roads, you must place it inside the warding circle. It will be very obvious when you see it. Uh, remove the defunct crystal, provided it is still there. Place the new one within, and um, it perform a ritual of communion, honing in the flow of potential. The runes will guide your hand and mind into its path, but a connection must be established by one of you. To this endeavor, though, I do not leave you to your own devices. The Divining Road, obviously, we, we possess, and uh, you, you take along the payment for clandestines. I will also be providing three scrolls of commune uh, to go along with your skills here. I believe, from what I have understood and Isaac has uh, surmised, uh, at least some of your party should be able to work with these uh, scrolls. And uh, in case of emergency, I will also be providing a series of tinctures, should you need them. Is there, like, finite alliance? Like the dark version of the infinite alliance that somehow mm. knows about us that's trying to, like, st what if we're walking into a trap? I see the concerns. Um, there is no such organized group as we know, but that is not to say that there is not several evil and dark groups of vigil. Certainly coming within proximity of the Ashen Waste implies all manner of threat. In terms of organized groups, it could be any number of them. This is Understandable to be concerned. But my belief is they would not hold these places as trap. The period of time in which it has passed since one has uh, fallen has fallen out of pattern to draw more. And I don't believe a group would be so complacent to sit and do nothing for four or five months. One one more question. Please. I guess it's just like straighten up a bit. Look down, look up. <clears throat> will will doing this help people? Most definitely. The Divining Network has been instrumental in hundreds of versions of Calamity. It has been, as I said, the heart of this alliance, the heart of what we have done for centuries. I think we should do it. I have a lot more questions, oh, but, but yeah. Feel free to ask. There is a lot of information at, uh, at work here. Essentially, we don't have to RP it, but just like all the logistics questions of like, is there a rough map? What's the exact locations of all these things? <laughs> like, um, we well, yeah, already told us the one of the one cave, but like, if when we get to the underground, is there like a closer exit that's closer to where we're going to go? Like all the logistic -y 
travel questions? <laughs> you know, the only answer is about half of them, and some of them you don't get answers to. Um, yeah. You can see on the map the exact positions, like uh, re- yeah. replicated as best they can on, on such scale. Um, the The highest peak of the Silver Highlands, which is to the kind of furthest north point of the Silver Highlands, is the is the first. Um, and the city or, or village town of Brunder Kiln, which I can spell for you or if you wish, um, or drop into our chat. It's probably easier. Oh yeah, you're gonna have to That's where the second one is. These words in the chat. Um, <clears throat> that is a an iron home village or town and he gave you a waterfall with which to go and, and search behind. So like, those are gotcha. both location and, and landmark to kind of guide you by. Um, travel above with- Above ground? The, those ones? That, that yes. one? Gotcha. Yeah, well, I mean, the, that one is, they're, they're both above ground. So once, you're, once you've collected the second rod, I see. Gotcha. you're clear to go above ground. What I will say is, um, to your like, just further question, trying to like get all the logistics of travel. So All this, the typical questions that I would be taught to ask mm-hmm. about getting places. Uh, he says he says two things. <clears throat> um, navigation below ground is uh, it's obviously difficult. Without the use of stars or sunrise, uh, setting navigation is, uh, well, it is difficult to keep track of north from the time you descend. That is your best bet. Find your cardinal directions from when you descend, do your best to always maintain them. Of course, if you need to consult the uh, the locals, they will also be able to help you. However, keep a discerning ear and eye. It is an alien place, and some of the locals do not look kindly upon those of us who live above. Others are quite pleasant. Find the law. Provided, uh, provided how the exchange goes with clandestrix, she could be uh, persuaded to providing you a lift up out of the dark. I would advise you to at least ask. Do you mean, you mean like to fly us on her back, like out of the dark? I'm not sure how she would do it. Uh, she could uh, use or a series of uh, elevated psionic tunnels. Uh, she could fly you directly. She could uh, provide you some form of teleportation. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how she would uh, go about it, but she is very skilled. I would just turn to Nettie after only hearing that she might fly us and just be like, we might fly in a dragon. There's definitely a chance. I think we should go for it. I agree, yeah. So cool. I'm trying to think if there's any other ways that he would need to answer those other questions for you. Uh, Andy, go ahead and just throw a history check. See if you recognize any of these other names and locations. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <clears throat> my skills. That is a 24. Nice. Okay. Uh, Brunder Kiln means nothing to you. Uh, Silver Highlands does like you've uh, that would have been the alternate path for you guys to take by by the road south of um, Darkvale. If you had gone directly south, you would have basically curved around the Silver Highlands through Kinshire. Um, You're just there. <laughs> so you will have to scale to the highest northernmost peak uh, there uh, for for that one. Um, but you you immediately know like got it. No problem. I know where that is in the world. Um, the second one, Brunner Kiln, uh, is, is uh, as I said, no clue. Uh, but Ilderfold, uh, he said in the setting shadow of Ilderfold, you do recognize that. Um, Ilderfold is, uh, obviously, uh, it's in Iron Home, and it is a dwarvish uh, mountain that is in uh, the dwarvish translation known as the World Fire, or Mountain of World Fire. Um, it is an impressive volcano by which the stout folk smelt and work with uh, their steel, their craft to create, um, oh, what did I call it? Iron, I think iron heart plate. Oh. 
That might, that might be a good. That might be a good place to get our shit smelted. It. Mm-hmm. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, one last thing for that same check. Um, one of the what would have given you a little bit of pause, similarly to Augustus, the shepherds do not travel in the underworld. It is a place where no sun nor stars shine, and therefore uh, the light of Koros does not reach. Uh, and it would not be a place with which you have any knowledge beyond terrifying tales. Oh boy. Cool. Did you give us Kyle exact space, or he, he just said, oh, there's an access in the city to Underworld, and I'm assuming we're going to get those details later? Uh, Isaac will be leading you there. Gotcha. Are we to go, like, now? Like, today? What time is it? Uh, it is still early morning. Um, okay. If you if you need anything uh, still procured within the city, and if you want to take another day or two, I would not... Uh, I would not caution you from um, from doing so, but um, the sooner the dividing network is whole, um, when there is a gap within the network, the whole loses some of its strength and potential. It may be small, and it has been so for six months in which we've had this gap, but there is now a large section um, in which we have no tap into this flow this the way you see colors with your eyes everywhere some people see them differently some people are colorblind to one or the other some are uh, are blind entirely to them when we have our divine network in full we can see the full spectrum of color and there are other colors with which our mortal eyes may never potentially see other creatures have ways of seeing that which cannot be seen by our eyes. But when our network is not full, we lose one of those colors, and we have no way to say which it will be. I turn to Augustus. It's a, it's a spectrum of magic, right? Different ways to tap into the same source. They all, they're all there. It's just, you can all, sometimes you can only see it with this help of Lothric Decreen, other magical things. Indeed. Crane's also seen one of these specters of magic, or layers of magic, when I yeeted him through the... (laughs) the Crane's seen seen a lot of things. He's seen many things. I've seen... I've seen what I need to see. (laughs) If if we had one more... Could we just have one more day to prep some supplies and stuff, and then we could head out the next day? You're welcome to. Of course. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the city as soon as we can go, the better. Um, but uh, pre- preparing is always important. We didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into when we kind of got ready yesterday. Of course. I don't, I don't like this city, but I like the sound of it more than being underground for yeah. days. At least you can kind of see the stars here. Um... If we do this, could you do one thing for Nettie and I? Maybe Isaac or or even tell us how to do it. Um, is there any way we could get money back to Mirabella, specifically to Bessie and Bakey Warren? Oh, oh, oh of course. Uh, as it happens, I own a courier service. Amazing. Okay. Um, if you were to spend... Uh, another day here, you are more than welcome to visit the office in the, uh, it's called the Cornerstone Couriers in the Merchant Ward. Takes out his little pocketbook, writes it down. We can do that in the morning. Perfect. I will have Isaac meet you there. How does that sound? You're gonna be someone else other than Isaac. He kicked the shit out of us earlier. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Um, However, <laughs> uh, with Isaac alongside, um, we'll certainly guarantee the most expedient service. Okay, fine. Uh, is there a uh, way... Isaac, just kind of as he walks behind, you just kind of ruffles your hair a little. <laughs> Don't worry, bud. Just fucking take it. <laughs> um, when we talked about 
doing the the ritual. Did you say you have to do something on this side at the same time? How do no. we? No. Okay. And the connection happens there. Gotcha. Must so we don't have to like tell you when we're done, because in theory you'll notice. We will see when the connection is reestablished. Gotcha. Is there any other way we should get in touch, or is is just kind of coming back here the best bet? Um, once we see the first of two real light, um, I think we will make our way to you. Oh. Okay. So should we still go on to the next one? Yes, we will meet you wherever you don't go first. Oh, okay. Okay. Perhaps not uh, immediately. You will likely be that before us, but we will meet you on the road at some point. Great. Okay. Is there anything else that we like looking around to the group? Anyone can think we really need for walking around in the underground? Is there anything we don't know? I don't know. Anything that we might need? We're going to need warmer clothes than as much as I don't want to take this jacket off. I'm going to need something to wear underground for that long. I mean, also... You'd be, uh, be surprised at how warm it is underground, actually. You're going to be more of a problem up in the mountains, to be honest. Indeed. Yeah. And in uh, Grandesux's area, it's uh, uh, incredibly cold there. Okay. I want to get a book about dragons, because that sounds so cool. I have many, actually, here. What? Yes. I've written a handful, actually, that happens. Good. I've had many years. Many passions. <laughs> Has no idea how to react to that, so just comments. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm kind of hungry, if you guys want to... I could look at that herbalism kit place and see if we can have some food and then start getting some supplies. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> unless there's any further like questions, that's the last end of the questions. You can all break and we can kind of work through some of the other things you want to go through the rest of this day. Specifically, though, you do have a couple of things I need you to add to your inventory uh, just to see who has what. Someone needs to carry the divining rod that you've been provided. Um, there is a staff that is payment for clandestrix that is like a full like quarter staff. Crazy. Um, uh, there is the jewelry box that is also payment. So the staff and the jewelry box are payment to clandestrix. Those need to be carried and marked somewhere. Uh, each of you gets a potion of healing. You can add into your All inventory. Right. You can also... Feel free, yep, just regular uh, low-grade potion of healing. You can also feel free to go through a short rest, um, but if you're going to stay in the city, you can also just go through a long rest. Uh, I promise I won't try and kill you yet. Okay. <laughs> He's lying. Okay. Psych. Knives in the stomach in your beds. You did that last campaign. I'll do it again. <laughs> Uh, and you can also add either breaking them up or one person can hold all three, three fifth level scrolls, spell scrolls. Um, when you search for them, it just comes up spell scroll, what level? And then you just type in or add in that it is the the spell yeah. commune. Is that a wizard spell? Uh, yeah. I don't have that much gold. It would be quite a bit. And you just spent 100 gold on Right into them. Uh, it is. Uh, oh, maybe it's not a wizard spell. I thought it was. I don't think it is. I think it's a cleric spell. Hmm. Hey, well, never mind. I couldn't put it in my spell book anyway. Yeah, well, that would have been cool. Scroll uh, commune. I don't see it. We want to split. Add it later. No, no, it's just scroll. You just got to do it's spell different. scroll and then add oh, the. Cool. I already I have them in mind, but if we can break okay, them okay. up, no, you, you do want to. You do. Um, I could take the staff. I could definitely not take the chest. I'm too tiny for that. I can take that. Well, Mondo instincts over here with the money. <laughs> uh, let me make sure. What do I have? So there's a divining rod. There is the right jewelry box or clandestrix payment, however you want to go about it. Three scrolls of fifth level, which would be for commune. Four potions of healing. And then um, a staff of healing. 
which is the other oh. staff, which is the payment for Glen Districts. Are we allowed to use this before we give it to her? Is that a, be a problem? Are we using it? <laughs> um, as you do um, collect all these things um, and kind of being kind of just exploring the nexus is um, uh, Ludomir does come back to you, uh, Augustus, with two books uh, that he's like kind of picked for you. One is called the Draconic Accords of Vigil, um, and he hands that over to you. He says, I spent uh, quite, quite some time uh, compiling this, sir. Uh, I hope you find it as uh, invigorating as I did. Um, Thank you. Uh, the other is not mine, but it is a, uh, a good compendium of uh, understanding of the basic physiology and uh, makeup of uh, Draconic Khan. Is this like the classic, like, really cool, just like the different looks of them and stuff? Yeah. In awe of this and kind of sheepishly, uh, Augie would pull out his little book that he scribbles in occasionally and be like, I, I couldn't do this too. I've been keeping track of all the birds we see. And then I draw them. And I'll just like show him and then. These are beautiful. Just kind of flips through and just like looks at uh, if uh, if you do have ever had any interest in uh, in publishing, uh, I have contacts that we could work at um, trying to put this such a thing together. If this is an interest of yours, yeah, excellent, yeah. wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. No, of course. More for the the world to see. Very moved. He just he will just it. cut him, <laughs> pat him on the back as he's getting the book back. He's so nice. I hate Isaac so much, but he's so nice. <laughs> um, you're all able to kind of uh, have a meal um, and have any other kind of like drinks you wish here, um, and. Uh, you know, rest up and heal after the uh, fight with Isaac. Um, but before um, you kind of begin to like leave for the the afternoon, um, Isaac kind of comes back to um, Enid. Uh, and I guess he would, he would pull, yeah, he pulled Augustus in because both of you were kind of had elements to this. Um, he says, <clears throat> um, Look, the, um, both of you uh, mentioned in discussion yesterday, um, and uh, Mr. Nostov and I uh, reflected on some of the elements outside of the uh, encounters with Ursa and Cal. This um, disturbing scent that you caught, flecks of rust, stolen items. Um, a few months ago, um, we had an encounter in a stash house lair northeast of here that we have. Someone attempted to raid it, um, take it. Uh, defense systems in the place kept things from falling apart and uh, nothing was lost, thankfully, on our end. But in the uh, fray, in their leaving, they didn't leave any bodies, but they did leave um, a blade that kind of fits perfectly the descriptions uh, you provided. Um, and he kind of um, lifts up a um, it's a chest but you can see um, there's like a uh, I don't know how to describe it like a almost like a plastic film across it like it's like a as if the chest was made of plastic uh, and he kind of taps it and says uh, I keep it in here because uh, Honestly, it stinks to high fucking heaven. And if you touch it, that is going to linger for days, as we came to find. It's uh, it's not good. But maybe hold your noses for a second and see if this kind of rings any bells. Uh, he opens the chest, <clears throat> and inside, kind of held in like um, kind of weapon holders that you put you'd put on display. You see about a, um, a foot long, maybe a foot and a few more inches, 15 inches, uh, a dagger uh, with a hilt and, and um, blade that looks almost like 
uh, it's been submerged and like rusted uh, and patinaed in this kind of brown and green across the the blade itself. You can see pockmarks and broken elements as if it's like an ancient blade. Um, but uh, the hilt is curved beautifully and there's a lot of filigree and, and, and like the make is pretty exquisite painted to someone who appreciates like the work that goes into weapon craft. It's a nice blade that has been corroded and corrupted. Uh, and immediately both of you are awash in a scent of decaying vegetation and um, that stomach turn, that twist, that fear ripple in your heart immediately pay, uh, comes immediately back to you, Enid. You don't have the same f sense memory flash, um, but you get the same sensations um, as it closes the chest and the scent like, is pretty quickly dissipated. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what you experience. Yeah. But, yeah. That's it. All right. Well, just so you know, we did some looking into what it is. We never, uh, the Fey is not something that we uh, deal with regularly. We try to keep our focus on the here and home. But asking around, doing our due diligence and research, um, it is in fact the Fey weapon. Um, it's from a domain known as the Midden Rot. This uh, swamp decay, where apparently weapons and armor, uh, things like this, can be taken uh, steep within the magic of the realm of the Rot, and in time take on the qualities of the of this place and become cruel, terrifying, terrible weapons. I don't know exactly how you're connected and tied to this, but clearly you have uh, origins beyond here, whether directly or bloodline. I don't know what more that helps you with, but at least it gives you something to answer. How long ago was this? Two months-ish. Give or take. Feels mighty coincidental that that happened there, and then we smelt that thing up north. That was my thinking as well. Sorry I said I didn't like you. It's not uncommon. But also, you didn't mean it. Thanks for showing oh. us this. This uh, this doesn't answer anything, but it helps. I hope it will come to answer something in time. I don't know what, but like you said, you know, it's too close a coincidence to not be on the path of something. There's some connection here that you're connected to. You're, there's something more that you're sensing. That reaction is not the same reaction he had or even that I had like it's gross obviously but there's something further there so if there are fey entities at work on our side of things and they're bringing stuff like this across it's something that we collectively as the alliance can add to our plate but we won't do anything without letting you guys know Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Do you find anything else that would, you know, build up the case? Bring it to me, bring it to Mr. Nuff stuff. Try not to go out and do things on your own. We would never do that. Sure. <laughs> cross, cross my paw. <laughs> if they're willing to bring these things through and they're as bad as they appear. They won't stop. Just, I don't want you to get hurt. Be careful. Okay. All right. 
we're going to keep this here in the uh, in the workshop for now if you need it for whatever reason I don't want to open that chest again though so that's icky just wanted to make sure you knew um Nostov and I are going to stay here you all are free to go wherever you want I'll meet you at Cornerstone tomorrow morning I'm going to sneak back. If they start to leave, I'm going to sneak back and come back to Isaac. I would just make some excuse, like I forgot something. Yeah, oh, yeah. I thought you meant Isaac and, and Ludomir, but the rest of the party. I will sneak back to... Yeah, I'll bail on the party and sneak back to Isaac. Gotcha. Uh, just quickly. He's on his way into the workshop, but yeah. Isaac. <clears throat> so. I can I can tell... Um, well, the crane for sure doesn't think I'm like strong enough or something to be part of this. And I had no idea what to do when you said you wanted to fight us. But I need to protect my sister. So could you help me become as strong and as cool as what you did there in the future? I have a couple of tricks, but I have a lot more experience doing it. Just the fact that you want to protect her puts you on the right path. And Andy, too, I'd protect, but, you know, Nettie's the other half of me. Of course. Look, you showed a... Um, you showed a lot of skill I didn't anticipate from you. Um, I think that that surprise is going to do you well. Okay that alone. Getting people caught off guard is a good way to get yourself in a good first step. And if you're willing to be the fiery shield to let your friends do what they need to do from behind, I think you'll all be all right. I can, I can do that. I can, I can learn to do that. Yeah. Doesn't need to be flashy, but you maybe need to, in those moments, not all the time, just be the shield. Okay. I think you'll be all right. Okay, thanks. I gotta go. Just Save run off. <laughs> As you guys all collectively make your way up and out of the Nexus, uh, what do you want to accomplish before taking uh, a trip down into the underworld? Oh, I have fucking underworld. I think we can just kind of, unless there's anything you want to role play through, I think we can just kind of rapid fire it off. Same even with the encounter and uh, the encounter, the um, courier in the morning, like how much you want to send like that. We can just kind of hand wave costs um, and get right to going down. Could we get some like spelunking gear? I'm thinking like, what are they? Pins climbing kits or whatever. Yeah, like climbing kits, rope, just in case we need that. Um, Do we need any shields or any? I, you, I was about to call you Hondo. Um, Kev, do you want to, like? Are there bullets here that you could stock up on? I don't know how. I could definitely. No, and that'd be a no-no to even ask about. Very that. illegal. Very illegal. Now, now. <laughs> There's plenty of ways to get illegal things in a city like this. this how, risk. <laughs> how much risk you wish to put yourself in on day two is <laughs> uh, is up to you to make that call. Um, but I would say, like, risk factor even asking, high. Without, like, having a trusted person, you know what I mean? I'm willing to take some risks. Oh, Jesus. Uh, okay, one second. I mean, you could ask around to our guide before you leave about if there's anywhere they'd recommend. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Isaac would give you, like, he would, like, flick your ear and be like, <laughs> I need you to think before you speak sometimes. <laughs> Look. I know you're wielding this. Not stuff knows you're wielding this. Um, and it's going to serve you well. I think, um, I think they serve a purpose. 
they can do good work in the right hands. But anyone seeing you in the city with that, we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we have to bail you out and out ourselves. If it comes to it and you're caught, unfortunately, as of now, we would have to deny any association. At this level three. <laughs> <laughs> You can't, we can't break you out of we can't break you out of super crazy capital jail at level three. Stop Give us ten me. more levels. Well, <laughs> now what I'll say B juice, we'll get a new character art, we'll do the whole thing. What I'll say is um, some of these things are being worked on in the College of Artifice uh, in, in the Guildsman's work. Uh, we have a couple of contacts there, but honestly we don't get along with them. Now, if you want to try and get your way in there, I think you could work around and, and uh, try and make some contacts, you know, work, work some, uh, some, work some magic there. Wordsmith it a little bit, be a little diplomatic. And maybe you can find your way into some material. And maybe if you can be convincing and pay the right amount of, uh, of gold, gold will talk more in this city than uh, the threat of legal action. I was thinking of just taking it. Would highly caution that thought. Would what is the security situation like there? At the Arcanic last, um, second only to the Kandorian Company. You should know. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm talking about like the the build, like where they where the you know where the gun where the bullets are being made. That's with the Arcanoclast. Doing. Now, yes, it would be in-house um, or at the College of Artifice. Now he's, okay. All I'm saying is you can certainly try, but if you get caught, we will deny any connections to you and can't get you out at this point. But if you are able to get some of the elements, we've had um, similar uh, construction done um in the workshop, in the Nexus. You're able to get the pieces together and you have the skill to put it together. I don't see why you couldn't do it yourself. Whether I can get, whether I can get the pieces or I can get the actual ammunition, is there someone that can help me procure these materials? Not in the time that you're gonna be in the city if you're planning to leave by today, but um, I'll put some feelers out towards the College of Artifice. I'll see uh, if the contacts we have there are willing to play. We have coin, and that talks. But I would strongly caution you from trying to get it in or out of the Arcana class themselves. If you come up against them and you're forced into an inter uh, you know, altercation, you're fine. But make sure they don't get back. He says that part specifically, making sure you're the only one to hear. If you encounter them, don't let anyone know. Don't let them report. Don't let them leave. Absolutely. And then you get what you need. But don't go seeking a fight either. I don't think the shadows will be gone. You got other people around you, though, to worry about. Something to consider. Anyways, I'll put out some feelers into the College of Artifice for you. We got a couple of people who we've worked with in the past. Um, if I can get you a keg of black powder, it'll at least be uh, the bulk of what you need. And that we can kind of work with. Uh, and you can you can work to pay it off. That, that could make a big difference, yes. And uh, if I'm honest... In the Underdark, uh, in the Underworld, sorry. Um, it's not, um, it's not impossible to find down there either. Luck of the draw. I, I appreciate the insight. No worries. Um, at the Cornerstone, how much do you guys want to send to fam? So we got 200 signing bonus, right? Mm-hmm. 
And then we have a weekly stipend of like hundred. Uh, weekly. What did I say? Two hundred. That was twenty-five or fifty weekly. Yeah, probably not the hundred. Yeah. I think you were. You maybe you were adding yours together. If it was oh, fifty. Yeah, we were. We were gonna combine it. Maybe just send next week's. We could keep our money as is, but then like we don't need next week's. So you could just send the fifty gold home. Yeah. I'm trying to find where I wrote the deal. How much does a horse cost in D and D? Yeah, but I don't think can we take oh, wow. a horse into the underworld? Yeah. Also, oh, I'm thinking really from expensive. my parents. No, I'm thinking from my parents. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just like but also that equivalent it, of fifty dollars is. That is a good idea, though. Like having something to help us, like a like a carpet type thing to help us oh carry stuff Pray for when we go we need a bag of holding we need a bag of holding just don't forget about the carpet during some of the most important battles of your life <laughs> including against a lich where we almost all die and you kept <laughs> flying away if only we could fly the two little you're fighters hearing... on the ground stuck and can't do anything <laughs> now if you're hearing this and think that sounds like an interesting campaign then check out the wild cards available on our channel over 100 episodes <laughs> Just cheerleader toss. Oh, yeah. Murder a lich. <laughs> uh, um, per week. Okay. Sorry. So uh, you can send 50 gold to your family. No problem. Yep. Um, and uh, for the actual like delivery um, with Isaac with you, you get the express rate for not the express cost. Oh, great. Um, so it comes with just some like it's more expedited travel horseback a little bit more secure um and it would cost uh, a gold done i'll give this guy two gold um and i'll include a little note hey we're doing well yada yada i'll include a drawing of some birds and um and he wants to add anything so no i will she doesn't know how to draw so she'll just doodle the best she can this like squiggly heart Nice. So they know it's from her. Beautiful <laughs> squiggly heart. So is that twenty-five gold each from you? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mark off that. Okay. Um. Uh, two gold. You said for the uh, payment there. Um, if you're looking for climbers kits, you can uh, each buy one. There would be twenty-five gold a piece for climbers kits. One for everyone's twenty-five gold. Be a hundred gold, gold each. Twenty five each. Sorry, that's what I meant. Yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. It's expensive, but I wonder if we'll need it. It is very expensive. It comes with uh, special pittons, boot tips, gloves, harness, um, like proper anchoring, climbing. Uh, well, we so also have a mountain climb, climb ahead of us. Twenty five feet from the point you anchor yourself. I think we should do it. Yeah. Let me find how much money I have. Twenty five. Twenty five each would be for that. Okay, done. We just don't have. None of us have wings. None of us have the fly <laughs> spell. None of us have any of these things that like could help. Uh, okay. in the city, you're able to find pretty much any kind of like equipment, any kind of those like generic like player's handbook elements. You can find literally any of them within this city. And if you're going to take a full day before you leave, like between the rest of this day and then tomorrow, like. You've got tons of time to go and search the open market. It's the weekend, so it's actually like the perfect, it's Sunday, basically, whatever the I okay. called Sunday. Um, it's the perfect day for like going to the open market today. Um, you'll be able to find any of this stuff at varying prices and varying levels, but um, totally doable. Uh, at some point during, well, one thing, I guess, how do we need um, rations? Yeah, food. I, think so. um, I can do good berry, but just don't want to gamify that too much. I think we should actually have some rations too. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, what the way I would rule, like if you're only eating, it's not going to be good. Berry, like it's like a, um, it's like a psychological issue more than like a physical one. Like the act of not eating anything will eventually play on your psyche. So I would like Drive make it like wisdom saving throws mm. of like feeling like you're starving after a certain point. I like that a lot. Um, 
rations for a day. So a full day is five silver. Okay, so we should get... And each day is um, two pounds. So think of how much, how, who's carrying how much. Jesus, I a can day, only carry so much pounds. shit. And five silver. I'm not going to be super hard on the carrying thing unless some, one person is carrying a thousand pounds. We have Baldur's Gate. I obviously can no. carry a bit more. I mean, if we each, if we each work on carrying like ten pounds, we what? How many weeks worth do we need? If we can say we can cut like do every three days, we could do good berry or something, right? Like try to. That's a good idea. So what would get us? It's ten days. To the ten eleven days. Ten eleven days in the underdark. At um, least. That's if we don't fuck up. Keep messing that out. Um, if you don't fuck up, if you nail the travel, you're looking at 10, 11 days uh, before you come above ground. And then yeah. you've got, uh, actually what I'll, I'll ask for you because now you've got plot points on a map. Um, are you trained in navigator's tools? I um, don't know, one second, I might be. If anyone is trained in navigator's or cartographer's tools, I'll, I'll give you a sure. chance to make a check to like gather the, that distance. I don't think I am. Map. I am in Navigator's Tools. Okay. Um, Go ahead and make a Wisdom check uh, and add your proficiency bonus. So it'd be a d20 plus Wisdom bonus plus two. Boom. 20. Oh, there you go. Great. That 20 on that. So that is great, obviously. So from where... uh, Obviously, they're giving kind of like a a ballpark figure of like where the... um, Clandestrix's lair exists in the in the underworld, um, but kind of ballparking what would be four days travel seven, seven days travel west, four days travel north, um, would kind of ballpark below the Silver Highlands, the, below the mountains. Um, so, provided you're able to kind of get Clandestrix to get you above ground and save you that vertical travel, um, in theory, she could get you right to where you need to go, or at least within the, the peaks of the Silver Mountains. And then you've got maybe anywhere from a day to three days of travel along the mountaintop to get to the to the peak. Um, so depends on how well you can work with Clandestrix if she gives you that opportunity. Um, but from there down to Brunder Kiln and these hot springs is about another 10 to 12 days given travel conditions and encounters and however things play out. That would be your half from the highlands down to Brunder Kiln and then from Brunder Kiln back to Carden if you're considering that extra element of the trip you're looking at anywhere from 9 to 12 days back so if I think if we do if we each get 14 days worth two weeks we're gonna in theory especially if we supplement with Goodberry we could in theory be fine until we meet, meet like Bridgerton or some other place where we can buy more rations at like a small town. Yeah, essentially just consider you probably got about a month of travel and stuff before you right. get back. So if we get, if we get about two weeks, at some point after that two weeks, we should be able to find a small town to get more. So mm-hmm. that's seven gold each, right? Yeah, because yeah, it's 70 silver. Mm-hmm. So and if how we each get seven... That? For 14, 14 days. days, 24 pounds. 28? 28? 28 pounds. Oh, 28. Yeah, sorry. I'm sure this is riveting for the listener. I assume most of this will get sped up, trimmed down, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll check <laughs> some of it. We'll just do a thing at the um, We'll cut it Secondly, up. while everyone's like walking around for the second day, I might, because um, I was very focused the first day about trying to not be seen and was being scared of being in a city. Um, I'm going to try to just keep an eye out for like any kind of shepherd signs, potentially at least trying to locate if I know where a tattoo place is, not necessarily going in, but just trying to see if I see any, any other shepherds or see any other signs of places or anything like that. Uh, Throw an investigation check. 17. I'd say you would find it. uh, I mean, it's found in the merchant's ward. Um, And with a 17, I'd say you find it. You find it relatively easily, but it is, it's it's a part of the copper house. 
Um, so like the Copper House is a, is a is a cheaper kind of inn and tavern. And then um, as like an extension, almost as like like what was like a shed or like a secondary building outbuilding was then converted and like rented out as like this studio. It doesn't have a sign. It doesn't have anything. But you do find like in the wall is the the uh, the shepherd like almost like druidic style marking to denote the um, the shepherd's um, known place and. Um, artist and connecting point kind of the, the symbol for like meeting place um so it doesn't have a, a name or anything like that um you don't see any shepherds specifically inside and you don't really see any around that's also not so uncommon it's not like, it's not crazy um but you do at least have a, a pinpoint on the location i will say it's um it's pretty far uh, well, it's, it's pretty close to the north uh, eastern gates, um, like pretty much on the furthest northeastern point of town, like just before you get into the outer uh, section of town where there's like the farm elements. Um, it's just within the northeastern gate. So like you barely have to get into the city, into the merchant's ward, and you can get there. Cool. Can I do a quick roundup right now of everything we just bought? Yeah, so we did a, a a bunch of random shopping. Um, before you do your final roundup, is that is that everyone good? Are we are we like Kev? Did you actually want to get a shield? You were talking about a shield. No, no. I thought for the for our smaller friends, the they might want something. I actually do have a shield, it's just not in my character art. Okay. I also before you do your roundup. Just if you were looking to get a horse to send home, um, you can buy a riding horse for 75 gold. That um, was more me just trying to figure out how what gold, the gold, like what is gold equivalent to? Yeah. What would a horse be? So. Uh, but uh, otherwise, go ahead and do your uh, round up. What'd you guys buy? Okay, so we bought 28 pounds of food. Thank you, Leah, for figuring out how much we would need. That's basically two weeks worth, right, Leah? That's what we were thinking. Two weeks per person, yeah. So 28 pounds per person. Seven gold, okay. Allie. So that's seven gold, and okay. we'll probably try and do good food occasionally. <laughs> good food. Good food did not sponsor this video, but we are open to sponsorships. We'll try and do good berry every couple of days to try and make that food last. Mm -hmm. uh, we also bought climbers kits, which were 25 gold each. Um, the way we divvied up the rest of the stuff was, just to make it clear, I'll take healing staff, Andy will take scrolls. Decrane will take the chest of tribute for clandestrix. And then Al, Enid, do you want to take the divining rod? You could like hold on to yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Kyle, uh, was that everything that they gave us? You just got a potion of healing as well. Oh, and everyone gets a potion of healing. Yeah. Make sure you add that to your little sheet. I think that's it. If we don't need extra warm clothes. We, well, maybe, I'll, uh, we, maybe we should um, buy some warm clothes. Yeah. You could find buy a the, sweater. You could find if you you know if you want to get a full kit of, of warm clothes, but if you just want to get a couple pieces, like five silver. Done. I guess just in like a cable knit sweater, or like yeah, over my jacket. I actually like the hoodie look, like a hoodie under a blazer. I kind of think that could be mm -hmm. fun. It's like a hoodie and then my sick fringe jacket over top. But a cable knit like is probably super cozy and actually appropriate for this D&D campaign so maybe that's what we should do or the so um, I'll take I'll take both they're like if you guys want to draw two different versions we can decide what looks best the cool guy like you know what I say what many mean when I say like the Arizona kind of sweater oh yeah for sure I do yeah, yeah it's like the hippie yeah. like yeah <laughs> like loose has like a the, Sedona esque yeah. sweater yeah <laughs> uh Unless there's any last little bits before you guys leave the city, you are, uh, meet with Isaac at the Cornerstone uh, Couriers. You send some money back home uh, along with some notes and, and art um, for your fam. Uh, and then you are led back through to the Lake Ward once more. Um, once you're ready, prepped, all your gear on you, everything kind of accumulated. Uh, it also, I should point out, it's also gonna cost a collective two gold for another night's stay and dinner 
Uh, so from somebody here that you can do five silver a piece if you wish, and that would cover uh, a night stay and dinner. Okay, I got it. Stay in the night. Um, regardless, you uh, you get led back and kind of chat a little bit with Isaac in the early morning, um, back to the lake ward on the west end. In the west end, there's a, a graveyard just north of the deep lake, um, and within uh, a mausoleum there is uh, this mausoleum that is marked with the surname Nestir atop. Doesn't ring a bell to any of you, but uh, Isaac kind of opens the gated entry. It's not locked. And inside, um, obviously there are, it's the interior of a mausoleum, but on the back wall, there is an engraved watching eye, a mixed kind of religious icon uh, iconography. Can I stop you uh, one sec? Mm -hmm. Have we seen that before? Am I having deja vu? Did Andy throw something at me? Have we seen Nestir before as something? Man, I'm just having deja vu. That's crazy. Okay, cool. Sorry, keep going. I didn't know if we'd seen that name before. No, nope, I don't. Uh, I mean, not that I, I've specifically not written it yet, as far as I know. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. No, that's fine. Um, there is this watching eye engraved within other religious iconography, um, and he kind of presses in the like iris and then pulls down to reveal a hidden hatch and stairwell into the stone beneath in the direction of the lake. Isaac looks at you all and says, it's a long walk. Good luck. Keep, uh, keep each other safe. Um, it's going to be dark. Be careful with light though. You become a beacon for anything else that lives down there. Uh, use it where you need to um, and expect that anything that's gonna it's gonna see you first before you see it um, Kat Nakur is um, well it's a merchant city uh, but the leadership had, trades hands pretty consistently and as does the policy and standing of whether they're a slaver town or trading in goods and services as any other city does. Uh, it can vary quite wildly, so keep your wits about you going there too. If you go in. Otherwise, just use it as marker and then head north. Good luck. We'll see you on the other side. See you soon. you will be in to descend into the world beneath this. We'll pick up there next time. Cool. Kyle, cool. let's just take a moment and say, it's set up the shit is. It's so goddamn cool. <laughs> Beacons and stuff predicting evil things that we gotta stop them. I fucking love it. So, I love the Divining Network. It's very fun. It's such a cool idea. I was like, as you're saying, I'm like, yes, I love <laughs> this. This is so cool. 